Right. Is he here? Woo! He's here. There he is. Um, he's here today. He helped connect me with Jerry Sinelli in the California Storm. So, as a 21 year old, my first game with the Storm was a memorable one. I started the game at right mid in Jerry's stalwart 3 5 2 system. He would never play anything else. Um, so, looking to my left was U.S. Women's National Team star Leslie Osborne. Uh, my lifelong hero, Cece, a former Cal All-American teammate, Kim Yokers. <laughs> Up top were U.S. legends, Brandi Chastain and Tiffany Roberts. I thought to myself, I have arrived. I'm here to shine. I have made it. Ten minutes into the game, Brandi had done several diving headers and backheel passes, was shown a yellow card, and had sternly explained to me to not play her wide run, but to find the second run centrally, where she had occupied the center back to create space for Kim to show. Huh? Second run, occupy the center back? Cece had already yelled at me five times to settle, calm. So for me, I'm like, was playing too fast the thing? And she also played me a perfectly lofted diagonal ball in the backspace, facing the opposite touchline. I didn't even think she saw me, um, but thankfully I hadn't stopped my run yet, otherwise I'm pretty sure she would have yelled at me. Uh, Leslie had won every tackle and every air ball in her area with such dominance, I was in awe. And Tiffany. Tiffany literally never stopped running, ever. She was everywhere, she was always an option. This was the first 10 minutes of the rest of my life. It was very clear to me, I had not arrived. It was not my time to shine. It was my time to learn. It was my time to be humble. It was my time to grow. It was my time to be patient and not just be thankful for the opportunity, but to take advantage of the opportunity. Because without this experience, I wouldn't be where I am today. I grew up wanting to be a famous college, or sorry, a famous soccer player. Sharing the last name with arguably the best women's player of all time was a huge motivating factor. She was and still is my idol. But I'm competitive and I wanted to fill, fulfill my own dreams and destiny. Make my own name. I had dreams of reading news headlines. Mia Hu, Tracy Ham scores hat trick in World Cup final. And MC Hammer's camera time playing loudly on the speakers after I scored a goal in a sold out stadium. In 2009, when women's professional soccer was set to start again, the WPSL held a combine in Sacramento to provide an opportunity for its players to pursue playing pro. It worked. The WPSL gave me a home. It gave me direction and experience and maturity. Refreshing the page every five seconds to see if I was the next pick, I was drafted in the inaugural season as the 28th overall pick to the FC Gold Pride at 25 years old. I cried at my parents' kitchen table. So did they. But life happens, and my dream didn't last long. At the combine, I had broken my wrist, had surgery, and was in a cast for eight weeks. With one week left to go with my cast on, and only three weeks until the first day of preseason, I separated my shoulder while coaching a high school team, half-assing a tackle while demoing 1v1 defending. I showed up for training camp underprepared and cocky. I had not arrived. It was not my time to shine. I was forced to be humble. I was forced to learn and grow however much I didn't want to or agree. I was released a few months into the season. I didn't understand then, but I understand now. I felt sorry for myself, um, but I knew that I wasn't going to get what I wanted. Character and mentality is something that we have to decide. It's something that we train. It requires bravery, consistency, and it requires the acknowledgement that pressure is a good thing. Pressure means you're showing up. Pressure means you have something to prove. So I trained and trained and trained and signed a new contract with the Atlanta Beat for the WPS's second season. There were ups and downs with that season as well, but I was proud of myself for showing up prepared. I had put in the work and I had refused to take no for an answer. With rumors of the WPS folding in 2011, I decided it was time to move on. I had three knee surgeries and my body was falling apart. So I applied to graduate school at Boston University and was accepted. I needed a new purpose, a new adventure. I earned a master's degree in education specializing in sports psychology. I felt I had always had a good grasp on the mental side of the game. I loved adversity. I didn't mind a good ass kicking from my coaches. I was good at motiv motivating myself and believing. Thinking that I wanted to pursue a career as a sports psychologist, I realized during my internships that there was an enormous void I was trying to fill. I missed the game. I missed the field and I missed being on a team. I dreamt of being a famous soccer player because I love playing more than I love anything else in my life. I also love winning. 
but I came to realize that my true love and identity wasn't being a player at all. It was to be a coach. Being a player was just an avenue to coaching. Being a coach is who I am. Being a coach is what I've dreamed of, I just didn't know. It's the most important thing that I've ever done in my life, and it's the most purpose I've ever known. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, that was it. Okay. Um, so I started again. I was hired at Santa Rosa Junior College in 2012 as the head women's soccer coach, and I couldn't have been more. Straight to the fire, having had taken a few years off coaching, I was rusty, but it was a wonderful experience. The range in demographics and eclectic group of women from different backgrounds with their own stories was both gratifying and eye-opening. They changed my life. They made me coach with a holistic mindset. You really never know what people are going through. I needed more information. How can I do this better? So while at the JC, I earned a second master's from Concordia University in coaching and athletic administration. I wanted to be the best for my players. They deserved more. Over the next few years, that hunger kept growing and I wouldn't let anything stop me. In 2016, in my second season as a head coach at San Francisco State, I applied to be waived into the U.S. Soccer Federation's C license. Regardless of a fairly extensive coaching resume that began when I was 15, I failed to meet their waiver requirements. One had to have played three years professionally, not two. I indicated on my application that no pro league existed from 2003 to 2009, and the WPSL was not considered professional despite the clear and obvious level of talent. How could they not honor that? Their requirements had been written for men, this was not malicious, it was simply an oversight. They hadn't considered that women may want to pursue licensing and should qualify for waivers. I don't do well hearing no, so I started looking for other options. A little less than six months later, I applied to the UEFA B license in Wales as a professional player, with no expectation of being accepted. If my own federation hadn't recognized my coaching and playing experience, why would a European country? So I made a few phone calls to mentors and coaches to see if they knew anything about the UEFA coursework. I asked if any American women had pursued UEFA licensing. Only one, Denise Reddy, and she had done her work in Sweden and lived on the other side of the country. I was inspired, but doubtful, intimidated, and unsure, until they accepted me. I took on new ownership. It wasn't about me at this point. I wanted to create a pathway and an avenue for other women to follow. What if there were others like me? After a very strange planes, trains, and automobiles experience, there are no direct flights to Wales, and a 14-hour stay in Dublin Ireland hostel, even stranger, I sleepily made my way to the Welsh National Training Centre outside of Cardiff. What do I wear? Where am I? What am I doing? Why are there so many sheep? Do they only drink tea, and is the beer warm? I walked into the conference room. All men. Self-conscious is an understatement, but I rocked my side ponytail the best way I know how and started maneuvering through the circular tables. I find my name tag and sit down. I belong. I have arrived. I appear to shine. I have made it. My short-lived confidence quickly turned into panic. <laughs> Peter Crouch, Gulp, Ryan Shawcross, Steve Sidwell, Ian Walker, Mito. What am I doing here? As each person entered the room, I received a glance of confusion. Of course, we go around the room once everyone has arrived and have to introduce ourselves. After what seemed like eternity, it's my turn. So with my heart beating out of my chest, in the most embarrassing voice, I say, my name is Tracy Ham, I'm from California, I'm American. <laughs> Thank you, don't know if you I sunk into my chair like a submarine hoping to drown in imaginary water. Finally, the lead instructor takes his place in front. He began, just one year ago, Thierry Henry, Roberta Martinez, Mikel Arteta, Pep Lingers, were all sitting where you are today. I have not arrived. It was not my time to shine. It was my time to learn. It was my time to be humble. It was my time to grow. It was my time not to be thankful for the opportunity, but to take advantage of the opportunity. 10 long days later, I received my UEFA B. Every day was the best day. From the way that they designed their training sessions, to their game management and match analysis, to their commitment to excellence on and off the field. My experience was nothing short of amazing. I wanted more. What else didn't I know? 
After earning my UEFA B, I reapplied to the U.S. Soccer Federation with my foreign license and was waived into the B license, skipping the C altogether. I had another great experience, though, learning more and more about the new roadmaps and pathways that U.S. Soccer has created. In 2009, or sorry, 2017, I received information on an upcoming UEFA A license being held. Multiple trips to Wales were required, eight film sessions and intense mentor evaluations, and over 350 hours of coursework over a year and a half time frame. I had to go. I was terrified, but I couldn't resist. Why stop now? So I made my way back to Wales on a much smoother route this time, but with a documentary film crew in tow. No pressure, right? I told my good friend and badass Courtney Levinson what my future UFA, UEFA A plans were. Being a huge women's soccer advocate, mom, and a big dreamer, she said, I need to see this. Women need to see this. They need to see you doing what they don't think they can. We need to normalize women in positions of power and authority. I'm making a movie about you. Are you in? Courtney had never made a movie, but this was all about firsts, and we were in it together. So with some hesitation and nervous to be vulnerable and show my potential deficiencies on camera and to strangers, I finally agreed. The documentary, appropriately entitled Coach, which you saw the trailer for, it highlights both positive and negative nuances many female coaches face in their desire to pursue licensing and education in the world of coaching. It has been a wild ride, one that I didn't know I was ready for, but I showed up. The film shows the raw emotion, commitment, exposure, and authenticity of what the profession demands. It's real, it's important, and it's something that I'm very proud of. This past May, I was on a hike in San Francisco with my dog, Murphy. I paused to check my email, and I saw that I'd received one from the Welsh Soccer Federation. It read, Dear Tracy, following completion of the UEFA A license assessment, I have the great pleasure in notifying you that you have been deemed competent. <laughs> I almost fell to my knees. I cried. I called my boyfriend and could barely speak through the phone. I said, I passed. And he said, who passed? As if someone had died. <laughs> I said, no, I passed. So it was funny. It was a little lapse, but it, it was good. Um, so that day happened to be my last day as the San Francisco State head coach. And, and one day before I started my new head coaching job at UC Davis. It was like a chapter in my life closed and another began. It couldn't have been more serendipitous. I am one of two American women with this license. Over 48,000 people hold the UFA, but less than 1% are women. I hope that changes, and I hope to play whatever role, big or small, in that motivation. My experience in the WPSL allowed me to continue to develop in the most important way. I am so grateful for having the chance to play with CC. She made me a student and made me rethink the way I knew how to play the game. Jerry Zanelli was the quirkiest, most generous patient and understanding advocate for the women's game that I've ever known. <laughs> uh, we grew to be very close and I will forever coach in his honor. Okay, that's the past. I've been like thinking about that the entire speech. I knew it was kind of <laughs> So, we all have a critical role in creating, defining, and executing opportunities for not just female soccer players, but for females in general. We have the power and responsibility to inspire, protect, empower, demand, hold accountable, and influence women in all areas of their life. To lead by example, meaning both in action and words, having integrity, and like Jerry Zanelli, being authentically you is so powerful. Being exceedingly curious and driven, but also self-aware, are powerful indicators of quality leadership, regardless of your role. What I do know about myself is that I can count on me. I know what to expect, because I've proven to myself over and over again that I can. You never know what you're capable of until you try, but you have to give ourselves that chance. We expect ourselves to be perfect, but nobody else does. They just expect what you consistently show them. I may never arrive, I might never shine, but it is always time to learn, it is always time to be humble, it is always time to grow. I hope I know when to be patient and when to not take no for an answer. Ultimately though, never just be thankful for the opportunity, always take advantage of the opportunity. Enjoy the pressure, enjoy the ride, enjoy the progress. 
The WPSL has come a long way and we are all part of that success. Let's keep it going. Thank you so much. Woo!